I, I believe that um, off and on the Lord has been bringing this back to my mind and speaking to my heart about the purposes of God and the kingdom when the kingdom comes. It is to set people free from all kinds of oppressions. And I was visiting, revisiting the gospel of Matthew a little bit and just, just seeing Jesus in action. His primary concern as he walked the face of this earth was sharing the, the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of oppression. And so it, it's good to be reminded of what Jesus is all about. And I know that in churches today that a lot of things take place. But if you are carrying sickness in your body, oppressed in your mind, demonic influence in your life, God specializes in things that are impossible with man. He does not change his nature. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Since he doesn't change, we can look for him to do what he always does. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For the Father was with him. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing their trespasses to them. Isn't that right? And committed the same to us. So we are to be doing the works of Jesus. Right? Remember that scripture that says the harvest is plenteous, right? But the laborers are few. But that means he's looking for us to do what he did by his spirit, right? All right, so we're looking at this passage of scripture. We'll talk a little about the healing of the sick. As I said before, off and on, God has kind of made that clear to me that he really wants people that are chronically sick to be healed. That's, that's what he wants. That's what he desires to do in our lives. And so we look here at what happened when Jesus um, came to Peter's house early in the call. He saw Peter's mother-in-law laid sick of a fever. How severe the fever was, it does not say. Uh, sometimes we have a fever. I don't think we take it as serious, uh, something, to be, something to be too serious. But whatever the fever was, I'm sure in, in that time and in uh, those countries like that, certain fevers could maybe lead, lead to death. But anyway, this says he was, she was sick of a fever. And when he came into the house and saw that, he touched her hand and the fever left her. She arose and ministered to them. And, and that's another little point that we can make. It's like when we, God ministers to us and ministers to our physical needs, he does look for service out of us, right? He wants to get some service out of our lives. So she rose to minister and serve. And, um, but then 16 says, and when the evening was come, they brought to him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by his other prophets, saying himself took our infirmities. If since he took our infirmities, we don't need to take them. Isn't that right? Himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness, right? He bore them, so that means we don't have to bear them. 
he bore them already. And so I, I want to appeal to you today if you are sick in your body or uh, diseased or afflicted, then I want you to just to tune in to the word today. God wants you well. He wants you whole. You don't have to twist his arm. You don't have to convince him. He wants you well. So begin to think that way. Now, just uh, um, as I was going through some passages of scripture, uh, I, I was just paying attention to um, some things that stood out in several of these uh, uh, miracles and healings that he did. Uh, one was, his willingness to heal. There was such a willingness for Jesus to heal. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Jesus was willing, so willing to heal, then he's still the same, right? All right, now let me show you some scriptures here. All right, the first part of chapter 8. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Behold, there came a leper worshiping him, worship and worshiped him, and saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Now that was a no no, right? You didn't go around touching lepers. But in his willingness to show him how much he wanted him whole, he Touched them, saying, I'm different. I'm not afraid of your disease. He touched them, and then he says, I will be thou clean. Well, look on down now in verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came to him a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lie at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, What? I will come and heal him. You see how willing Jesus was to heal and still is today? He's so willing to heal. So if there's a condition in our body, I just want you to think with me now that Jesus hadn't changed, right? He is willing to heal. Now, um, let's see. Verse 16. And when, I'm sorry, when the evening was come, they brought to him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick. You're going to get this day, right? This is his will. This is his mind. This is God's desire to heal us. And what I'm speaking, what I'm speaking healing, to manifest his healing. To make it real, right? And that to, for the power and the virtue to go out and heal. So now, verse, um, let's see. Move on to chapter 9. Verse 18 says, when he spake, while he spake these things to them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay your hand upon her, and she shall live. Jesus arose, got rid up, and followed him, and so did his disciples. Just, just look at Jesus. Look at him. You know, I, I you know, it makes us, you know, you think about the Apostles and prophets and bishops today, I don't know if they would be so they would be so willing to get up and heal or prioritize in meeting human needs. Are you hear what I'm saying? But Jesus, that's the way he was. Here's somebody coming to this rabbi. He was so busy, said, "My daughter's you know at the point of death." And Jesus says, "I'll I'll come and heal." I mean, doctors don't even do that. <laughs> I mean, it's, this is Jesus now. He hadn't changed, right? 
We know that Satan paints a very bad picture of, 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 of Christians and God and how God is, but God's not that way. Here's what the scripture shows, right? And as we go on, look at verse 20. Uh, eight, and when he was come into the house, let me go back to 27. When Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Believe you that I'm able to do this? They said to him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Didn't argue with them, didn't fuss, didn't say you got to go get your life right and a whole lot of stuff. I mean, can you, I want you to think with me here because this is something that I believe can help us in our faith to understand that uh, uh, what happened during redemption, okay? Verse 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He was, he was not satisfied with healing just a few. He healed them all. Wow. Can you, I mean, see this Jesus for who he is, right? He healed all that were sick. Then it says that it might be fulfilled, which the word of God says himself, talking about Jesus, took our infirmities, our weakness, our feebleness, and healed our diseases or sicknesses, our pains. He took it on himself. He took it upon himself. We, so he wants us to know that he is ready to manifest that healing to all kinds of conditions. It is so important. He wants to do that for us today. Hallelujah. And, um, but I saw that, uh, that his willingness to heal, it just stood out. That's what he does, right? And since that's what he does, he's good at what he does. He enjoys doing what he does. The second thing I saw was Jesus never put a lot of stipulations on the people. Now, if you go back again in 8, he just, the leper that came, said, if you want to, you can make me clean. Now, Jesus is going to say, well, I'll tell you what, you got to go back and Forgive this John, forgive Sally, forgive them because actually that's the root problem. So you can't get healed until so-and-so, right? But look what he said. He said, I will. That's it. He didn't say, he didn't say you got to get saved. He simply healed them. Now, if he said something else, it's not recorded, right? He just healed them. If, if you can grasp this now, it, because it's, it's, it's liberating, it's, it changes the way we see God. He said, I'll come in here. No, you, I mean, well, you know, he ain't been living right, so you, you, you need to address that first. He didn't say that. Saints. Can you hear you? I mean, this is Jesus. This is the one that we worship. Seeing how he is. And, uh, okay, let me look a little further here. Go back again to what we read. Uh, verse 5. He came, uh, we read it before him, entered in Capernaum, there came to him a centurion, beseeched him, saying, uh, Lord, my servant lie at home, sick of the cause of grievous torment. Jesus could have said, okay, well, it's not your time yet. You know, I, I, I ain't come to, I ain't come to, uh, you know, to deal with the Gentiles. But he just said, I'll come and heal him. So the centurion was so struck by that, he said, God, I'm not worthy for you to actually come into my room. But you just say the word, and he'll be healed. God was, Jesus was impressed with the man's faith. And he was so impressed with Jesus' humility and love until he said, I, I'm not, and his holiness is, I'm not, I'm not worthy. I, I, I don't feel worthy for you to actually come under my roof. But, but, but look at this. Jesus was going to come under his roof. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> that is, I mean, this, this is it's just so awesome. Now, turn briefly with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to say something before we go on to that. When you're there, say amen. Okay. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, or to know, that's what I mean, that God was in Christ reconciling what? The world to himself. What's the next verse? Not imputing or not charging their trespasses to them. Everybody see that? God was in the, in, God was, the Father was working in Christ, bringing the world back in harmony with him in relationship with the Father, right? Not charging their trespasses to them. You got to see this now. And so when Jesus came, the disciples were so, so, so used to the way things were. This blind man, he came to him and said, well, Lord, who, who sinned? Him, except for his parents. That this man's in this condition. Jesus ain't neither one. Jesus never put a whole lot of stipulations on them before they could be healed. Preaching today, they sometimes seven steps to healing. <laughs> all right. But let me erase all seven steps and say, believe only. And you shall be whole. Isn't that right? Come on, thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. God was in Christ. Bringing the world back in harmony in their relationship with the Father. But in order to do that, not charging or crediting their sins to their account, he took our sins. He took them. Are you with me? If since he took them, Jesus in light, of Calvary began to heal all that were sick. So that means all of that was done in light of Calvary. The Paschal Lamb, the sacrificial lamb, that's why he did it. So once he went to the cro cross, he simply was acting out the will of the Father, which was done uh, in the mind of God already. So and, and so since that has happened, and so we can understand that Jesus died on the cross for our sin, he is now not charging sin to our accounts. Wow. So when we're approaching God, we must not approach him and, and constantly, constantly, and it's okay to examine your life, but not to go... To the, to the ridiculous trying to find out where I've done wrong and all that because I'm not healed, right? It is important, exactly, we disqualify our own selves when we do that, but if we in faith know that God took our sins on the cross, hallelujah, glory to God, then we can receive from God. Hallelujah. That's what he wants to make us well. I dare say the good news that Jesus proclaimed in every city had to be concerning himself. I'm the one, the Messiah, the anointed one, the Savior that come to rescue you. Hallelujah. And so when Jesus came and you look at his life, you see 
wherever there were sicknesses and diseases, Jesus healed them. And the Bible on more than one account says he healed all that were sick. Now if the writer and if the Holy Ghost was truth that he pointed out that, then it's something that we could take note of. Don't, let's not discount ourselves when it comes to healing. Well, maybe I'm not healed because or maybe this or maybe that. <laughs> exactly. <man. laughs> you know, so right. So let's begin to say this is his promise to me. He took my sins. He took them. You see why praise is so important? Recognizing and acknowledging not only who he is, but what he's done for us. When you praise God consistently, you say, God, I am ever grateful for redemption. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord wants you well. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. My God. Now let me share with you some things that uh, I, I think is important. Uh, many times the Lord heals. And I, I believe in services like these where the presence of God is. It's, it's, it's so easy for God to heal. And it's so easy for us to embrace God healing love. And now... But there are specific instances where sometimes people are prayed for. Um, and there are situations in the Bible, too, when Jesus prayed and the apostles prayed for people. He expected them to act on it positively. Sometimes he helped them, right? Peter and John was going into the temple. There lied this man there looking for arms, begging for arms, and Jesus, I mean, and Peter said, look on us, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Peter helped him. He reached and grabbed a hold of him and snatched him up. And when he snatched him up, the Holy Ghost put strength in his legs. Y'all getting this? One of the things I appreciate about Bishop uh, uh, Witz is he always acts on when prayers are prayed where God has spoken healing. And one day I was, we were left to prayer breakfast and it was just like the Lord made that clear to me. He said many times his power come to heal but sometimes people don't act on it in faith or receive it. They wait for a feeling or symptom to leave, then they say, oh, I am healed. <laughs> exactly. They're asking for proof. But the one that when the prayer of faith is prayed and they receive it and act upon it, God honors that faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know a dear, one of the mothers shared this with uh, some time ago that she was prayed for and nothing changed as far as the symptoms. She went on home and that week she just, and every time, that every day she said, well, the man of God prayed for me. So, Lord, I'm healed. Before that week was out, total healing. So, the task of those that are God's servants or people, the elders, when they lay their hands on people to be prayed for, do not discount the purposes of God. This is how God set it up. That's one of the ways that he set it up. 
He said, let them call for the elders of the church and let them lay hands on them, anoint them with oil. And, and he said, if they've committed any sin, listen to this, it shall be forgiven. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. So not too many people take full advantage of the scripture. Isn't that right? Uh, so, but but I, I want to get back to the point that I'm making is um, act upon the healing. Uh, do what you couldn't do before. Many back problems have been healed when people had pain, couldn't bend their back. And some of the, some of the uh, ministers would say, just, just do what you can do, bend. And, 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 and the one that had faith, they would say, well, I can't do I mean, they, they, they didn't have faith. They would, they would look at them like, I can't do that. Don't you understand? You know? But when they made an attempt, all of a sudden, their pain was loose. So there are many instances where when God uh, said you're healed and whatever, you are to act on it. And strength will come from the Lord because you act on it. Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. There's uh, another instance where in when uh, people, um, we are to stand on the word when symptoms disappear. Let's say if a person is prayed for and hands are laid on them and immediately all symptoms leave. Now your faith must not be in the fact that the pain is gone. All right, y'all with me? Because if your faith is in the fact that uh, if your faith says I'm healed because the pain is gone, then what's going to happen when the pain comes back? Because those pains will come back and try you and t test and see if you believe it. That's when you stand. That's when you speak what God has said. The word says I'm healed. And you don't have to do it long. Those symptoms will go right on the way again. So many people have just lost the healing because they let it come right back because they were believing when the symptom disappeared. So when the symptom came back, they embraced the pain. Oh, y'all hear? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm trying to... I believe this. I really believe this. So stand and it'll go back. It'll leave like it came, right? It's, it's, it's very important. Now, the in, some instances are different, but I'm just sharing with you some of the things that does happen. And we shared about uh, standing if, if, if when you pray for and if something don't disappear, then you stand in faith. Well, the scripture, is, the, 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 the scripture has been carried out. He said, they lay hand. I called for the elders. And they laid hands on me, and therefore now God has forgiven my sin because he said he would, right? And all that stuff, if I've committed any sin. So, in other words, these are just some things to do so that you won't go back and we won't embrace a pain that immediately was taken away by the laying on of hands or by the word of God that came, and then you thought, okay, well, it ain't gone. And it happens so many times, saints. But remember, Jesus is who he say he is. And he honors faith. He really honors faith. And uh, so, uh, but in Peter's in situation here, now there's an example uh, when Jesus prayed, I mean, when he told the 10 lepers, remember that? Anybody remember that passage? He said, go show yourself to the priest. Obviously, the healing had not manifested. Right? They could have said, well, I'm not going to the priest until I get here. But they didn't say that. In obedience, they went on their way with leprosy, still looking at leprosy, right? But as they went, the healing took place. So I'm not, I'm speaking Bible, y'all. I'm speaking the things that this is, is important that we understand so when we get healed. Now, everybody won't be tested in, in that way, but there are some that will be tested when God heals them, but you'll know what to do. Isn't that right? 
You'll know what to do and you know how to handle it. God heals. And I, I remember God, uh, he comes and he manifests his healing power. And uh, he loves us. He cares for us. And he is for us. And so he, um, but I, I, the second point I had been making was that he doesn't put a lot of stipulations on us. He wants us to know that he's for us and that price has been paid. If you were going to a football game and it cost X amount of dollars, if you wanted to go, or you had a friend and the friend didn't have money but they want to go to the game, you paid them, paid their way, right? Are they then entitled to see the game? Are you with me? Same way when Jesus died on the cross for us. He took the penalty for our sins. Now there's another situation in the Bible where um, Jesus said, he said, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. So the Pharisees like, this man is blaspheming. Who does he think he is? Talking about your sins are forgiven you. Jesus said this. He said, well, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or to say, rise up and walk. But that you might know the Son of Man has power to forgive sins, I'm going to say it in another way. Rise up, take up your bed and walk. So the man got up and began to walk. Then they could believe, like, oh, we never said it. <laughs> but they could not believe. They thought he was blaspheming when he says your sins are forgiven. What he was really saying is, if I heal you, it's evident that your sins are forgiven. Isn't that right? Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. So God heals us and he uh, makes us whole. So uh, the good news is we, the gospel has come. The kingdom, the rule of God has come. And that kingdom has come to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus said, the thief comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Nothing more profound, nothing more simple than for God to heal a body, heal a person's soul and mind. Jesus makes evident that this kingdom has come to rule in this person's life, sickness and diseases must not rule. Are you with me? So, if I'm preaching the gospel, then we believe that God will confirm his word. Are you with me? And the Lord working with them, confirming his word, right, with signs following. If I am preaching the truth about God and his holy kingdom, then there's going to be a manifestation of the power of God because Jesus is real. And he would love nothing greater than to know, for people to know how real he is and the love that God has for his people. So when people get healed, they can go back and tell their family members. And the story is told, New Heron told us about how overseas there are a lot of Muslims being healed and, turn, and turning to God. And um, he, one instance he was telling about uh, some Muslim there, they were uh, a gang of them, and they were pretty vicious and violent, and they wanted... Um, and but they told them that if if your God is greater than our God, if he if my mother is healed, then we'll serve your God. Well, you know the story. The mother got healed. And they turned to God because their God couldn't heal the mother. Saints, God is real. And he's here today to do what no one else can do. I wonder if you'll just begin to acknowledge it and let's thank him some. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is our healer. He is our healer. Hallelujah. He's come that we might be healed, and he came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to heal all who were oppressed of the devil. Jesus came. This is his purpose, saints. A part of his vital purpose, you know, except to go to Calvary. But when he went to Calvary, when he went to the cross, he paid the price. He paid the ransom price so that we might go free from the bondage of Satan, from the bondage of sin and sicknesses. He paid that price. So the Father released us now because the price has been paid and the Father was satisfied with the price that was paid. Hallelujah. Only he could pay the price. And he paid it because he loves us. So we're getting ready now shortly to pray. And we ask that you will be sensitive to the Holy Spirit for him to move in our midst to begin to heal chronic pain and sicknesses and diseases because this is the Father's will. Hallelujah. And the Father is glorified when this happens. Hallelujah. He's glorified. He's not putting stipulations on you. So if you're putting all those stipulations on you, take them off right now and just exercise faith. Is that all right? Hallelujah. My wife is going to come, but let's just start praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus, you took our infirmities. Jesus, you bore our sicknesses. Oh, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Holy Spirit, take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Heal sicknesses and diseases. Heal pains in the body. Heal arthritis. Heal conditions, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, um, we're giving you the praise because this is your work, Lord. Um, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, have your way now, Lord God. Oh, you're in the midst of us, Lord. Oh, as we continue to praise and giving him that opportunity to move. And move by your Holy Spirit. Oh, move by your Spirit, Lord. We honor you today. We magnify you, Lord.